Welcome back. In this episode of Oxygen Not Included, we're going to be taking another good look here at the hydrogen bubbler system. And we're going to be trying to take it to a whole new level of efficiency by trying to remove as many parts as possible. So, this has been in direct response to many of you guys that have been talking about trying to create a siphon system and also trying to work on pre-cooling and that's what I've done right here in this setup right now. So a lot like Tr uh, Trisha's recommendation right here, which she's been talking about this for a long, long time, having the, the, the really cold uh, hydrogen over here and then your oxygen comes in and you try to pre-cool it before it goes into the system. So focusing on pre-cooling, this is the setup right here. So. The liquid oxygen comes down here, goes on over here to the left side, and then creates this area of very, very cold oxygen. You can see right here, that's negative 134 degrees Celsius. Very, very cold. You can also see the gas pipe right there is negative 132 degrees Celsius. So that is also very, very cold. And the contents of the oxygen that's within that gas pipe, or the polluted oxygen, is still quite warm. So. I did a lot of testing on this beforehand. I did about an hour of recording, and th the conclusion that I've come up to is that currently this game, the mechanics don't match what you would think would be the right response, theoretically. Like, there, this here should work flawlessly. It makes complete sense, right? Liquid oxygen gets very, very cold, it comes on over here, it then uh, will actually boil off into a cold gas, and then stuff that's moving through this should get cold, right? And the closer you balance those two out, you know, the less energy it takes to cool it down over here. Here's the problem. And it's the same reason that this system over here on the right is as efficient as it is. And it's the same sort of thing that matches that we did when we had the perpetual motion machine right there. And that is that the temperature resets every time the gas moves from one tile to the next to that same temperature that it outletted from. So right down here, it gives it a negative temperature of 250 degrees Celsius comes out of this thermal regulator. And every time this moves, this gas resets to negative 250 degrees Celsius. So I gain a lot of very free energy that way every time this moves. You can see how that number right there just dropped again to negative 250 degrees Celsius. So this is gaining a lot of free energy. But this is also working against us over here as each time this moves, it's taking on the temperature of its source. Whoops, people are dying over here. So in theory, it's a completely sound idea that this should pre-cool your gas that's entering the system. However, in practice, in the way they get that this game is currently working in this build up here, this is the alpha build, um, it doesn't make any difference at all. So the only way to get away from that would be to pre-cool your mass before you start pumping it. So maybe we were to put a, a pump inside of this area right here with a lot of these uh, wheeze warts then you could pump something that is very, very cold. So in order for me to do any sort of test on like pre-cooling the gas that goes into this system, I'm gonna just have to physically change the temperature that's feeding into it. Obviously there's different ways of getting gas in here that don't necessarily require a pump, but I'm gonna try to isolate those variables and just physically change, you know, what is the temperature that's coming out of my source of polluted oxygen. I'll go ahead and put this somewhere else and pump it in. All right, so the other thing I want to show you real quick here is that the siphon system works perfectly. It's absolutely awesome. So on the right here, I have about one kilogram of polluted oxygen, depending on where you look right here, but it's very low density. Over here on the left-hand side, after everything boils off, I have a very high mass of oxygen. So what's happening is the liquid oxygen is flowing down here and then travels through this little tile sort of lock right here. So the mesh tile is important. It kind of helps create this barrier, but it isn't necessarily needed because I do have another one that is right on over here that seems to work, but you can see it's a little less consistent. So the water kind of sticks to the walls right there and then blocks off the flow of gas between the two areas, but the liquid still flows through itself. So you can see it's kind of flowing down here and then when that, this is where it boils off. So that completely gets rid of the need of the liquid pump altogether. Obviously you can still use the liquid pump and we know that that could be about as efficient as, I don't know, just a few kilojoules a day. So that system works really, really good. All right, so I'm creating a little bit of a bench test right here. So this is gonna be at its normal sort of 26.8 degrees Celsius. So this is where I'm gonna start with, do a couple other tests just to kind of see where that number goes. All right, so here's my results for the system here on the left. You can see that it produces 140 kilograms of oxygen a day. So that is quite awesome right there, giving you enough to supply 2.3 duplicates every single day right there at a very low cost of 97 kilojoules, giving us the best number we have seen yet of watts per oxygen being 1.16, giving us the best number that we've seen yet. Now it is worth noting that this system over here
here on the left got larger. And you know what? When you stop to think about it, that makes a huge difference because the temperature resets to its original inlet temperature every single time it moves from one tile to the next. So you're really not losing more energy by making your system larger. So therefore, the larger your system gets, theoretically means the more efficient it should get because you can produce more oxygen. All right, so I'm gonna paint this in at 273 degrees Kelvin right there. And you can see that is more or less zero degrees Celsius. There we go. So now these are moving a much, much colder polluted oxygen. So that should reduce the amount of energy it takes to convert it down. So we should get more oxygen per cycle. That's what I'm thinking. All right, so here's yet another interesting result. I mean, you can make of this what you will. So I went from the inlet temperature of 26.8 degrees Celsius, set by sort of whatever that polluted oxygen was before, down to zero. And that did increase, let's say, from 140 kilograms of oxygen a day up to about 150 more or less. So it's 148.4. So there was an increase in the amount of um, production. However, this came at an increased cost because those pumps had to run more in order to pump that oxygen into the chamber to begin with. So the net result was that it was less efficient than it was at a warmer temperature. So there you have it. One experiment, some results. Make of it what you will. You can let me know what you think about that in the comment section down there below. Interesting. I think that's some debatable results, but there you have it. That's what they are. All right, so let me go ahead and make this chamber larger and see what happens to that number. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and see if this larger radiator becomes more or less efficient. What do you guys think? More efficient? Less efficient? All right, this thing is just pumping away. It's, it, it is pushing out the oxygen. Obviously, making it larger is going to increase the amount of production that can be run through here. Reducing the temperature again obviously increases the amount of production rate that it can do. But the real question is, is that going to become more or less efficient because these gas pumps have to continuously run more and more in order to get this down here. Alright, so this increase in area, look at this, I'm already up over 200 kilograms in just one day right there. 220. Whoa! All right, so here's some more results for you. We did increase the production rate from 148 kilograms a day to 213 kilograms right there. So we're up to three and a half duplicates right there. So that's pretty awesome. Although, again, since we are pumping more and more gas around, we're also increasing the amount of kilojoules it takes to run that system. Ending up with a net result of 1.38 watts per kilogram of oxygen. So slightly less efficient, but you can support more people off of it. All right, so those are some really interesting results right there. Obviously, it seems like the more oxygen we are creating, the less efficient things are becoming. And I think it's all revolving around these two gas pumps right here. I think those are the biggest power suckers now. Obviously, dropping the liquid pump out of the system completely made a big, big difference as far as how efficient our system is right there. So that was a big step forward, getting rid of that and using the siphon system. So let's see what we can do to get rid of these gas pumps. Suddenly very sunny outside. There we go. <laughs> uh, I went outside. It was beautiful, 72 degrees, slight breeze, sunny, absolutely fantastic. Went and got some ice cream with some friends. It was great. But don't think I forgot about you guys. So how can we remove the pumps? Well, there's many different sources for polluted oxygen. Obviously, you're gonna have slime. You know, it could be emitted. You can either dig it up or you can have a puffed. And these, this stuff here emits slime. We've done a couple of videos there where you can actually live on polluted oxygen itself. It's not a very efficient thing to do because you do have a lot of uh, duplicates that are going to be highly stressed and then they'll be a little less efficient because they have to stop and like destroy your machines or whatever. But you can live on polluted oxygen. Another infinite source of polluted oxygen is morbs. And as we can see right down here, all you have to do is sacrifice a couple of duplicates. You know, maybe they're just being absolutely horrible or pain in the butt or just like destroyed your stuff. Yeah, you know, turn them into morbs right there and you can create a lot of um, polluted oxygen from that. Obviously though, you need to set this up in such a way that it can turn into pure oxygen because that's gonna be a little bit more useful 
than polluted oxygen. So that's what I created up here. So you can see up here, I have five morbs and they're just running around and they continuously generate more and more polluted oxygen. Quite a lot, actually, as we can see right here, this is 18.1 kilograms. However, once the system gets up and running, that number will drop and it'll actually start to create a little bit of a vacuum. What happens is that down here, as this stuff condenses into a solid and then goes through the liquid block right there, or the liquid valve, whatever we wanna call it, it'll then release over here. So that actually starts to create a bit of a vacuum and it starts to suck that polluted oxygen down. So just like Mysterious says over here, this should be the most efficient freaking oxygen refrigerator thing ever. And Samsonite Dove here, as well as some other people, I'm not, I don't wanna just give credit to just one person, but you guys were talking about creating things or, or leaving morbs or pretty much just about anything like valves and stuff like that halfway into water so that this morb constantly thinks it's in an area where there isn't polluted oxygen, so it just goes and creates more and more and more, never stopping. So that's what I did right here. I just left a little bit of water, and that also works really good to temperature control the morb, so that this morb, despite having maybe this area up here being really hot or really cold, it kind of still keeps it safe. What we'll see here is that as this works, this area up here still maintains a decent temperature while everything down here is getting really, really cold because that flow of gas is always down. Second thing I wanna mention is that I did try to do this with one singular column right here. It, there was a comment, I can't find it anymore, that was talking about this thing being something around 13 or so tiles tall and that seemed to always be able to turn polluted oxygen into clean oxygen as it was passing through it. However, I think that has to do with just the volume of polluted oxygen and all that stuff. This here is going to take a lot longer to turn into um, liquid oxygen just because it's so dense currently. Alright, so just to kind of explain the system right here, I have the same balancing chamber going on up here. It's a little bit taller, but it's running at that exact same temperature, so negative 238.2 degrees Celsius right there. I have a large area of just like normal oxygen. Again, this can be vented off into your base wherever it needs to go. You can also put other equipment here because you can see right now it's negative uh, 116 degrees Celsius. And you can also see it's very high density area as well, just because I've had this running for a little while. I put the equipment down here at the bottom. As many of you guys have been recommending that I cool the equipment that is making all of this stuff with the liquid oxygen. And that's exactly what I'm doing right here. So that's one use. And then one last thing is I'm also using that liquid lock right there. So that siphon. So that's blocking everything here so that this area over here is constantly dropping in, in volume right there. So you can see it's at 10 kilograms and it's slowly dropping down as things are just moving over to the right side. So there's that vacuum. You can see the flow of polluted oxygen flowing down constantly. Hmm. So one interesting problem I'm having now, now that I'm trying to set this up to be a test, is that it's getting too cold. <laughs> it's just starting to make a lot of solid oxygen. Alright, so this is kind of interesting. I got the system up and running again with a uh, negative 213 set on the switch right here, so I'm not turning things to solid, but I'm getting this sort of dancing water sort of thing going on. This is kind of cool though. So it comes down here, and then suddenly whoosh, goes right on up here. Now that stuff is really, really low density. It's just a few grams of liquid oxygen right there, but it's bridging kind of like what we saw with that siphon technique right there. So all the liquid is actually down at the bottom. Just to kind of avoid this dancing water thing, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of a lot of these blocks. Just like that, there we go. So that should go right down there to the bottom. I think I could do the same thing over here. All right, so this is a bit weird, but I'm having a lot of issues getting some sort of power usage reading. I wasn't having this problem before, probably because my system was drawing enough power to where the batteries weren't constantly like registering as full. For some odd reason, once those batteries end up kind of full, it starts to throw off my reporting for whatever reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have my guy sit on the manual generator right here. So it's just going to be a lot of wasted energy. But when this stuff up here does run, it should start to increase the power usage. As we can tell, it's not going to be a very high number. So th that's what my test is going to be. I wish it was a little bit simpler, but I can't find another way to get this to work. And I've been messing with it for about a half hour and I'm just running out of time. So I don't know. This game tonight is throwing a lot of curveballs at me. All right, so let's just get a quick look at what's going on here. We have five morbs running around, creating lots and lots of polluted oxygen. As you can see right here, it's a little bit over two kilograms of oxygen up there at 45 degrees Celsius. And then it continues to cool down, gets very cold right here. 
really cold and then as it moves down through this radiator here it eventually turns to liquid right in this area right down here so that's where it's happening and then dripping on down there so this the results were that it only made about 43.6 kilograms of oxygen a day so that's not quite enough for one duplicate but that's obviously something we can scale up the power it used was minuscule as compared to anything else we've tested thus far, being at only 10.4 kilojoules of energy a day right there, giving us 0.4 watts per kilogram of oxygen. So you can see right here, if anything, if there's a takeaway from this video besides all of the confusing results I've had thus far, um, just, you know, this game throwing curveballs at you with its power usage, it's, you know, different little bugs and quirks and everything, we can see that there's a huge difference between Gosh darn it. Ah, Meep, you just had to go and die on me. <laughs> Messing it up. All right, so the takeaway for today, obviously there's a lot of sort of confusing things as far as the temperature resetting and that not making pre-cooling being quite as effective as it is and all that blah, 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 blah. You know, all of that sort of crazy stuff that kind of, that this game throws curveballs at you. I think that's one takeaway is that this game likes to throw curveballs at you, which takes perfectly sound logic and kind of throws it out the window every once in a while. The other thing is that we can see that there's a huge amount of energy in kind of trying to pump polluted oxygen into this cell right here. So if you can get rid of these sort of pumps, you can really make your system a ton more efficient. Now, of course, that is until they kind of patch this and the next update is coming on the 18th, so we're gonna see how this all works and whether or not some things are gonna happen. But until then, this is a perfectly sound sort of idea. And as we can see, it is very, very efficient. So thank you guys for all the recommendations and kind of helping me, you know, develop this to this point. This has really been a real community effort, you know, developing this hydrogen bubbler to so its most efficient point. That's where we're at right here. The only thing next is to scale it up and see, you know, what all sort of effects that have right there. How many morbs does it take to support a duplicate? And then how many, many, many morbs does it take to support, you know, from there on up? Is it a completely linear thing or is it not? Or does this watts per kilogram change after that or does it not? Or what does the updates, updates hold for the hydrogen bubbler? How is that going to affect things? I don't know. There's many different ideas. Obviously trying to run liquid pipes up through here and try to get some sort of use out of that stuff. Potentially using carbon dioxide in its liquid form to kind of cool some of the warmer gas up here. You know, do a multi-stage cooling. Uh, you guys have talked about that a few times or, you know, maybe do crude oil. I don't know if that's going to be available in the next update, but if it is, that is a great medium for kind of pumping that around maybe pre-cooling things with liquid instead of just gas pipes right there maybe multiplying or maybe reducing the amount of volume you need right there or being able to reclaim and pre-cool a little bit more i don't know there's definitely some more stuff that we can test from here on out but for today this is the end of my video thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode here of oxygen let not included let me know down there in the comment section below and if I've earned subscription, then thank you so much for that. Thank you guys for all of your support lately. It's been absolutely awesome. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.